Now, it's very hard to understand for people who don't know the area, the absolute fragility of the environment there, the flora and the fauna there are very precious. The uh, powers that be don't seem to understand the threat. No, they don't. And the, the approach certainly early in the week seemed to be, well, it's, it's out in the middle of the ocean, so it's not threatening any land, so it's not going to have much of an impact, which is, of course, nonsense. When the, you know, the, a lot of um, ecologists call that area the marine superhighway because there's so many species up there and you know, whales use that area to migrate. There's turtles up there. Apparently, it's a, it's a time when the baby turtles um, aggregate around there. Um, there's obviously a lot of uh, various fish species up there and there's some very important islands and fringing reef systems that are extremely vulnerable to the impact of oil. Now, the oil seemed to be spreading um, both to, both um, west. We flew out 40 nautical miles, which is about 80 kilometres from the rig west. There was still oil in the water there and, of course, that's spreading towards areas around uh, Ashmore Reef and other fringing um uh, corals there and it was spreading towards the coast um, and in fact we saw one um, oil slick very close to the, when I say very close around 20 kilometers um, from the coast um, which which um, is getting much closer to the coast than we were led to believe that the oil slick would in fact you know the, the statements earlier in the week were that um, the coast wasn't under threat well from what I saw yesterday in particular the way that the tides are working the coast is a th- is at risk particularly when you consider that this oil leak is uh, continuing and it is likely to continue for another seven to eight weeks, according to the company. That's pretty outrageous. It seems very much it's a case of out of sight, out of mind. And as the state and federal government are touting their uh, development um, credentials and the Gorgon deal and all these other things that are going to assault the environment there, this is obviously going to be embarrassing for them, but it's a tragedy for the environment. That's exactly right. Um, and, you know, you have to ask, why did it take so long to respond? Why didn't they put some burdens in when this first happened? Now, there may be good reasons for that, but we, that hasn't been explained. Why did it take so long to um, get planes um, up on site? Where, why isn't the, the spill response gear located closer to the north um, the northwest and the north coast in particular because we have such a sensitive environment environment up there. And when you consider that there's a lot of oil and gas activity up off the Kimberley coast, and in fact areas much closer to the Kimberley coast than this um, well, because they, they said, well, this is further off off, land, off the coast, it's not going to have an impact on the coast. Well, well unfortunately, that's not the way nature works. Um, when we're saying there shouldn't be any further development activity off the Kimberley Coast until they get better response times in place, until they've checked um, or reviewed the regulatory uh, framework for oil, the oil and gas industry to check what went wrong on this rig, but also you know what caused the problem, because we still don't know what caused the problem. And we also need to put in place a series of marine reserves along the Kimberley Coast to ensure that that coastline is protected. And uh, it must be the cynical journo in me, Rachel, but I, I really think that our Federal Environment Minister, Peter Garrett, has been spending so much time preparing for his late-line interviews to defend the Gorgon decision, he's forgotten that there's a major slick off our coast. Well, he certainly hasn't been very vocal on it. I mean, Martin Ferguson was speaking about it and, tra- and downplaying it last week or last Sunday, um, and certainly um, Minister Garrett hasn't been very vocal I would suggest that um, if he hasn't um, had a chance to look at it yet, that he goes up and has a look at it. Um, I know that he has a special affinity, affinity for the Kimberley, so we're told, well, he should go up and have a look at, at just the potential risk that's facing um, particularly that North Kimberley coast um, because there, there is a, a, a potential, very strong potential, that oil is going to hit the Kimberley coast from this slick, given that there, we're, this is week one of potentially an eight-week continuing oil slick. And the way it's spread at the moment, the way it's spread in a week, you can, I can only unfortunately imagine what it's going to look like in eight weeks. And it's hard for people to get their heads around it too because um, the great aerial shots and the video we, you'll be posting later on don't really show the threat because in that huge ocean, this huge slick has actually dispersed out quite a lot. But tidal movements can make, turn it into a tidal wave on our coast. Well, what, what, it, what it's doing at the moment is you've obviously got the concentrated oil around the rig and there's the photo that if people go to the website they can look at, that's just oil um, around the rig and you can see a, see sort of a mat ready sort of brownie slick. Now, that's just that's not the whole slick. There's oil in the water all around the rig. And of course, as you move away from the rig, it's, it's obviously just, it's spreading. But it's spreading out 
much further into the marine environment than certainly I expected. I was, as I said, quite shocked when we were flying out to encounter it so early when we were flying towards the rig. I wasn't expecting to see it like that. And then if you look at some of the photos, you can see it, what I've been describing about the oil moving in the flow lines, and that's how it's been brought down to the coast. Now, I've got to say there's a number of there's a, um, people that raised that straight away. In fact, um, uh, Richard Coston, who, who has been doing the videoing um, with us, um, predicted this last week and said um, he's very concerned about the currents and he thinks they're underestimating the, the capacity to spread because of the currents on the Kimberley Coast and because of the, the tide, the very strong tidal movement. And unfortunately, that appears to be exactly what's happening. The oil is spreading on these strong um, currents and these strong um, tidal movements and bringing it, it's, it's bringing it close to the coast and taking it off towards you know, off to the west as well towards um, places like Ashmore Reef. Well, we're looking forward to you keeping tabs on this and hopefully um, pricking the state and federal governments into some sort of meaningful action. And uh, we'll be uh, letting people know that they can uh, get further updated pictures and videos and information from uh, from your blog and your website there. Yeah, that's, yeah, you sure can. And there's also, we're putting up maps about where we actually took photos so people can actually locate them um, from the, the coordinates. I, I was in charge of taking the longitude and latitude, so we've got all those on the, we'll have those on the map as well.